Hello and welcome to the Cruising Altitude. If you are new here, welcome. If you are a return guest, welcome back. Uh, we're still pretty new here. This is going to be one of the very, very early videos that gets uploaded. Um, and if you do like what you hear, what you're watching, let me know in the comments. Feel free to send me a message, uh, like, subscribe and all of those fun things. In this video I'll be walking you through a couple of the restaurants and bars, eateries on board um, and just to note I am vegetarian so I'll be speaking into the options there uh, as well as a few other dietary restricted options. So first up we have the Britannia restaurant which is one of the main dining areas on board. Um, this is one of those places where you do usually have to share a table with other guests um, which we're not fans of, um, we prefer to have a private table, so we spent very little time in here, even though uh, we did manage to request a two-person table. And whilst we didn't spend too much time in the Britannia restaurant, uh, I do recall having some a couple of pretty nice dishes, including uh, roasted butternut squash salad, uh, cream of asparagus soup, um, there were some pastas, curries, all vegetarian. Uh, they, they could also make vegan versions of these uh, dishes and uh, I believe gluten-free as well. Um, my mum on the other hand is a meat eater uh, and so she was able to enjoy, you know, they had uh, battered chicken breast, they had mussels, shrimp, chicken salad, uh, steak, a whole plethora of uh, dishes which were all presented uh, perfectly. Next up we have the Golden Lion Pub and I would say this was one of our favourites uh, on board. It had plenty of home comforts and uh, often, you know, sometimes you don't feel like sitting in a restaurant and getting dressed up and so this, this was the perfect venue to grab something to eat in a much more relaxed environment and if you've watched my previous video about crossing the Atlantic and how rocky it is, the Golden Lion Pub is situated midship, uh, very central. So if you're uh, seasick or anything like that, this had like the least movement, I would say. Still, still moves, but much less than uh, a lot of the other restaurants which sit at the forward or aft of the ship. One thing I'm always really grateful to find are uh, vegetarian options that kind of sit above a bowl of fries or um, chips or crisps or whatever. Uh, so I'm always really grateful to find things on the menu that are a little bit more substantial. At the Golden Lion Pub, they had a delicious Wellington. It was a Portobello Wellington, um, which I can still remember the taste of it now. And we travelled on this ship two years ago um, and it came with chunky fries or maybe we ordered those separately I don't remember I definitely had chunky fries with them and it was just it was so filling uh, but not overly so it was absolutely delicious um, and it came with a blue cheese so you had this mix of like the mushroom and then you had uh, a blue the blue cheese inside it so there was this real nice like taste fight <laughs> in your mouth um and then it had balsamic glazed shallots uh obviously and then it was baked inside a puff pastry it was absolutely delicious um for meat eaters which i can't i can't tell you what that tasted like because i don't eat meat um but they had plenty of options uh and my mum tried was had a couple of these options and she said they were delicious throughout. So some of those options included a steak and Guinness pudding uh, or pie. I would call it a pie. They called it a pudding. Um, <laughs> a Cumberland sausage with mashed potato and bubble and squeak. There's a favourite right there. Uh, chicken tikka masala. Uh, they also had a plowman's, which is basically a mixture of cheese, pickled onions, um, which you then place onto uh, bread. Uh, and they also had a cottage pie uh, and a whole selection of desserts. Uh, so we had a lot of fun heading down to the Golden Lion Pub, grabbing our favourite meal, mine of course being the Wellington, and then joining in on the trivia. Now, talking about the trivia on board, uh, it is a, an older ship in terms of the ship's age, but 
also the passenger demographics. They are, uh, I would definitely say the majority are 65 plus, if not 70 plus. It is a much older cruise. And so if you are traveling with younger people, don't fear. There is plenty to do. Uh, like I said, this trivia, we had so much fun with this. And we actually won some prizes. So they do hand out um, stamps. So every time you win a trivia or any sort of competition on board, there were other things going on like treasure hunts that you could do and dancing competitions. All fun, all fun, nothing serious. Uh, but you could win stamps. And so we won a couple of the um, trivias and we had these stamps, but we had no idea what it meant. We were just, you know, every time we won, we'd kind of say, yay, we're like <laughs> absolutely clueless as to what these stamps meant until the end of our cruise when they told us we could go and cash in our stamps. So we're all very excited, you know, we've got our stamps and we head down into this room, which I believe was one of their uh, conference rooms that they keep back for events. Um, so I did go ahead and take photos of all of the prizes that you could collect with your stamps. And so because of that, I'm going to share with you the prizes that we could have, should have, would have, and actually did win. <laughs> so number one, one stamp would have got to you a pencil, a Cunard pencil. Uh, and the hardest decision here is picking the colour. Two stamps got us a memory stick and this is what we took home and it has a lots of Cunard photos on it and it works as a flash drive. Four stamps is a pen and keyring set. This is really really stunning like just to go and take part in a couple of quizzes and do okay on it. Uh, I think this is a pretty nice gift to take home on the last day. Five was a notepad or a notebook, I should say. And again, the quality of these items that they're giving away are very nice. You know, it's not a it's not a cheap freebie, I would say. Uh, eight stamps. This was my favorite. So eight stamps would have got us a travel clock. But unfortunately, we weren't too good at these trivias. We won two, two. But um, yeah, not too good at the trivias. So I had to let this one go. Nine stamps is a photo frame, uh, and there's so many, so many memories to have on board that this would have been a perfect one for us to have taken home. Fifteen stamps was a travel set and included lots of leather look goods. Seventeen is a wine cooler. Awesome gift there. Eighteen stamps was a flask set, uh, and twenty-five stamps were binoculars, and thirty stamps was a scrapbook. So I'm going to leave the stamps and prizes behind uh, and take you into the King's Court buffet. This, as mentioned, was a buffet. However, there were some things on here that I haven't seen on other ships yet. Uh, one of the things as you came in, they had a grill that you could go up to and request a burger. You could also sit down at that very front portion and order your burger from a table. So it was a little bit of like a buffet restaurant hybrid, but only in that front section. Then as you moved in, there was a plethora of options for everybody from salads, fruits, meats, vegetarians, uh, all sort of uh, international cuisine, drinks, teas, coffees, all of this. But one of the things that really stood out to me, uh, and what I'll talk about on here, was there were some sections that were catered to just gluten-free and just uh, dairy-free and just vegan, which I found incredible that they, they had done this and separated this out. So, you know, as a vegetarian, you know, I'm okay eating dairy, but sometimes it's difficult and you have to find people to find out what something is or what's in it or, you know, so rather than having to ask questions, I ate a lot of vegan options uh, in the buffet all of which were delicious. Um, and also I don't drink dairy, uh, just out of choice, no other reason, just out of choice. But that was nice as well that they had lots of milk options, lactose free options, you know, plant based options, um, lots of plant based cheeses, uh, which like I've said, is incredible, especially for a cruise line that is so old and traditional. I almost, uh, when we came on board, was planning on living on chocolate bars and crisps, uh, 
partly because I didn't believe, I didn't, not that I didn't believe, but I didn't think they would have so many vegetarian and vegan options on board. So that was a wonderful treat. Another thing that was a treat, which I have mentioned a little bit at the beginning of this piece, but the fruit on board was divine. Uh, and I'm going to show some art pieces that came up on board that the chefs had carved in. Those were pretty incredible. Um, and the desserts as well that were on board. Uh, good job they had a fitness centre on board because we enjoyed some of those desserts. So right here you'll see those fruits that I mentioned. Uh, delicious dessert right here. And my favourite, the cake. Oh, the cake. Absolutely delicious. So next up, we're going to move on to the Queen's Room, which was used for a plethora of events, including a masquerade ball, a talent show. We had a black and white ball. There was also a end of cruise party that was so much fun that took place in there. Um, plenty of seating. One of the things that we were looking forward to prior to boarding was the afternoon tea that is served in there daily. And being Brits, you know, we do in love our we do love our cup of teas and uh, scones with jam and clotted cream. So our plan was to go in and enjoy this daily. However, we went in on day two and found it to be extremely busy, extremely busy. And we were placed at a table with. Uh, another couple that I believe were from Germany, um, very nice couple, but myself and my mum and these others clearly wanted to kind of have their private, you know, conversations and we were placed with these other families and so it's always a bit strange and awkward, uh, so that was one thing we didn't again enjoy about this. Another thing was you had some waiters coming around with uh the tea and others coming around with the scones and so what we were finding was they would come around and pour the tea but by the time the person with the scone came your tea was cold and it was just a weird experience we only went in there once so I don't know if that continued uh, but it was definitely a little bit of a disappointment um, you know we made the most of it we enjoyed it while we were there uh, the scones were nice. The other thing I will tell you, and here's like something to note, some of the baskets of scones you could see coming out of the kitchen and those were warm. And if you want like the experience, you need a warm scone. So we would watch them coming out of the kitchen and we would desperately like try and get their attention to try and get a warm scone. Uh, but if they walked around serving other people, by the time they came to you, your scone was lukewarm, sometimes even cold uh, and definitely not enjoyable. Uh, at that point. Now if you do get an opportunity to uh, head out on the Queen Mary 2, I definitely would recommend checking this out but take note of those tips and watch for the waiters coming out of those kitchens and uh, try and grab yourself a hot scone. Next up we have the Veranda restaurant. This was a paid restaurant and actually one of my favourites on board. In fact, this was my favourite on board for food and experience. One, because it was very quiet at lunchtime, but also the views were beautiful and the food was incredible. So again, a sample menu uh, that I recall, they had lobster cocktail, they had salmon, clam chowder, uh, beef brisket, um, I think they had salt baked baby beets, they had ribs, they had sole, uh, chicken breast, pork chop, lamb, uh, and obviously as a vegetarian, my ultimate favourite, which was the Beyond Burger. You can't imagine my excitement to find something on board that had plant-based meat. Sometimes you just need that chew, you know? Sometimes you just need it. But anyway, so that was absolutely delicious on board. And I'll insert some quick images here of mine and my mum's dinner. So this was the Beyond Burger. I'm not veg I'm not vegan. I am vegetarian. Uh, so you'll see the cheese on top there with the caramelised onion and the brioche bun underneath. Delicious. And then my mum had the meat uh, there with the French fries, broccolini, cherry tomatoes, and she said it was delicious. So there we go. Uh, heading into my favourite, here we go. Uh, the raspberry pavlova. Oh, so crunchy, so yummy. 
and inside that raspberry pavlova was raspberry ice cream it was absolutely delicious I never finished desserts uh, but this one I managed to devour without much help from my mum um, next we're gonna head into the Godiva cafe so here are our two bear friends that we purchased on board in the Godiva Cafe. The Godiva Cafe was a perfect area for a cup of tea or, of course, being Godiva, a hot chocolate. Um, but they also had some very delicious cakes, uh, which we spent much time mulling over the menu trying to decide which to take uh, because there are so many options uh, and some of those options included a dark chocolate and salted caramel tartlet, a milk chocolate hazelnut cake, they had Godiva chocolate macaroons, they had a triple chocolate brownie, they also had ice creams and sundaes on board. Uh, one that we noticed was the Chocolicious Chocolate Sunday that included dark and white chocolate ice cream obviously by Godiva uh, and then that was topped with mini brownie cubes and, and they drizzled uh, hot fudge and chocolate sauce and then they sprinkled uh, crunchy chocolate pieces and almonds on top. That always looked delicious. Uh, we saw others having uh, having ordered and enjoying that one but we didn't actually take hold of that one ourselves. We enjoyed a couple of other cakes which I will show you some photos of in a second. Uh, some other options were fondues. You could pick from a dark milk or white ganache and then with that you would get uh, pieces of croissant, uh, fresh strawberries, fresh banana, marshmallows. Uh, you could go ahead and dip to your heart's delight and enjoy all that chocolate. Um, they also, of course, as I said before, Godiva chocolate, you know, two and two, hand in hand. They had some pretty delicious chocolate drinks. Uh, they had a chocolate They had uh, a shot of chocolate, which was basically a shot of melted chocolate, which I'm a huge chocolate fan. Uh, but that was uh, a bit too much for me, I will say. That was a little bit too much. Um, they had cold chocolate drinks. They had anything you can think of. Chocolate drinks with caramel, vanilla. I mean, if it's chocolate, they had it. You could also create your own mini box of chocolates. And I believe the smallest amount available was four pieces. Uh, and they would set you back at around $6, maybe $6.50. Uh, and some of those options included the Curle Heart, which has the hazelnut praline inside it. They had caramel, uh, almond, uh, what else did they have? I think they had nougat, um, they had the moon-shaped, again, hazelnut praline one. Uh, lot. There were so many, I can't remember them all, but I guess those were the ones that stuck in my mind, um, or that I had photos on uh, that I'm recalling here. You could also get uh, afternoon tea which was a whole tray of brownies and hot teas and uh, a mini that came with a mini box of chocolate as well. So that's what we enjoyed, uh, partly because it had a variety. And like I said at the beginning, we were struggling to choose uh, which cake to pick. So that kind of enabled us to sample uh, quite a few things that were on the menu. Right here you'll see one of the days we enjoyed a tea and a cake that came with a side of a chocolate mousse. Uh, the tea options in here were pretty decent, so they had black tea including Earl Grey, English breakfast, Darjean, uh, and also decaf tea. They also had herbal teas. Uh, they had blueberry merlot, uh, chamomile, citrus mint, ginger, raspberry nectar. They had green teas as well. I believe they had uh, mango, peach, jasmine tea uh, and then they had a white tea. Um, you could also have iced tea. Here's that selection of chocolates that you could pick from. Um, here is that afternoon tea that we had. Delicious and here is that box of chocolates that we devoured of course. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, staying with me and listening to my video all about the restaurants and food available on board the Queen Mary 2 uh, ship. If you enjoyed this video, please do go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, 
subscribe if you enjoy what I'm doing. I would love to hear your feedback. As mentioned, this is a new channel, uh, so I welcome any feedback, anything that you would like to hear, learn. Uh, as mentioned in my other video, I did work on a cruise ship uh, for uh, last year, so during 2019 I worked on a cruise ship. Happy to answer questions. If there's anything you would like me to make a video on, let me know. I do have a blog. It is the cruisingaltitude.com where I have spoken about a lot of my trips on there uh, which I will be sharing via video soon. Uh, so in the meantime guys, happy 2021, happy travels and I hope to see you back here soon.